All right, equilibrium constant Kp. Remember, K, guys, is just a constant. Anytime you see K, Ka, Kc, Kw, Kp, it's just a constant. And this is going to be specifically Kp, right? So this P just stands for pressure. Pressure. And this pressure is specifically for gases only. Okay, so no solutions allowed, right? So if we have a random reaction, 2A plus B gives us 3C plus D at dynamic equilibrium. We're going to have two things here. We're going to have our reactants and our products, which are our capitalized letters. And then we're going to have our mole coefficients. Mole coefficients, right? It's an imaginary one here, an imaginary one here, and then a three here, and a two here. Okay. That is the mole ratios between the reactants and products. Now, if we need to construct our Kp expression, it is super simple. Okay. Kp equals, now think back to Kp, I mean Kc, right? Kc is just concentration of products over concentration of reactants and into the power of the mole coefficients. So in this case, two, one, three, three, one, right? All we're going to do here is no square brackets, get rid of the square brackets. In Kp, we do P, rounded brackets, okay? Now, you can do a single lowercase p, you can do a double lowercase p, both for those are fine, okay? I'm going to go with just one because it saves me time of writing a second letter, <laughs> okay? And then you do exactly the same thing, products of reactants. So we got 3C, so we're going to have partial pressure, open rounded bracket, C, close rounded bracket to the power of the mole coefficient, which is three. We're going to do the exact same thing for the other product here, D, rounded bracket, D, close rounded bracket to the power of one. But because it's to the power of one, you can leave it off. All over P, okay, partial pressure of A. I'll go through what partial pressure is, don't freak out, to the power of two, because that's our mole coefficient, multiplied by P, our partial pressure of B, to the power of one, but we can leave it off. Okay, and this would be your Kp expression, super, super simple, right? Let's go through our three equations you need to know. And this is how I remember them, how I teach them to my students, but you know, remember them however works best for you, okay? We're gonna have a fat P, okay? Capital P right here. This is gonna equal sum of lowercase p. Okay, so let's go through what each of these variables are. I'm actually gonna write all of these out. And then it's going to be quicker, I think, when we go through them. Okay, it's all right. Sweet, we've got our three equations on the page. I'm going to explain them one by one and see what's going on. Capital P is our total pressure. And again, this is in kilopascals, okay? Total pressure, as we can see here, is just the sum of, or the total, of the partial pressures. Okay, so let's say you're given in a question, they say the total pressure is 600 kilopascals. That means that everything added together is going to be collectively 600 kilopascals. So it might be like 200, 100, 150, and 150, whatever it is. As long as it adds up to the total pressure, you're all good to go. Okay, so that is exactly what our lowercase p is, partial pressure literally a part of the total pressure, okay, for reactant or product, okay? Now the sum, we all know this is sum or total, however you want to think of it, okay? Next up, we've got this, lowercase p, exactly the same thing, it's our partial pressure. Capital P, exactly the same thing, it's our total pressure. This x, this is a new guy here, what's this? This is our mole fraction, okay? There's no units here. I forgot to say the units of partial pressure is also kilopascal. But there's no units here, it's just a fraction, right? So essentially, total mole fraction equals one. So if you do your calculations and you work out what your individual mole fractions are, you add them together and it does not equal one, you've messed up somewhere, okay? So how do we work out our mole fraction? It's literally what it says. Just like partial pressure is a part of the total pressure, mole fraction is a fraction of the total moles, which is what we have right here. This is going to be total moles, okay? And then this on the top of the fraction is just moles. So let's say, for example, we had NH3, and it says, aha, what is the mole fraction of NH3? You would do the moles of NH3, which you can calculate using ice tables or other methods, or maybe even given to you in the question, and you would chuck that into the top of the fraction, and then you would add the moles of everything, so all the reactants, all the products, Chuck that in the bottom of the fraction, and that will give you your fraction of total moles, our mole fraction, okay? 
And what you're going to often do is you're going to need to, you're often going to be given some sort of data to work out what this is, the moles of each thing. You're going to funnel that into work out what the mole fraction is of each thing. And you're going to funnel that into work out what the partial pressure is of each thing. And you're going to funnel that into the KP expression and work out what KP is. If you're given KP, you may need to work out the partial pressure of one of these. Um, and solve as needed but just like with any calculation in chemistry as long as you get as long as you remember the equations remember the units and know how to rearrange equations properly you're going to be completely fine i have no doubt if you want to grab yourself a free pdf formula book check out the link down below and you're going to be able to grab all my free resources as well if you're struggling with chem and you need that little bit of extra help to boost your grade as quickly as possible check out my tuition offers but regardless this video should help you and put you in a good place to solve all the calculations you need to.